Hi, I'm going to make a very short video about the lack of supplies for the coronavirus epidemic that's currently going on and I'm going to give you four ways that you can decontaminate your N95 masks since they are currently in a very short supply and there's a lot of people around the world who are struggling with it and who are not having enough of personal protective equipment. So um yeah i've been a total a little bit of a nerd following this issue and just so you know sorry um this video is not going to be edited not too much at least uh, i don't have the hard drive on my computer to do it and i also don't have the time so really it's just about the information that is going to be here so basically there's four ways <clears throat> four ways that you can decontaminate n95 masks number one is uh probably like the lowest tech way that you can do it and that is um don't use your mask for nine days so if you for example are going outside like uh, twice a day they say they recommend um to have like you know to change your mask every four hours or yeah. so so let's say if you're outside if you're having a day a job of eight hours or whatever uh it means you're probably going to use two masks a day so if you could have 18 masks uh and um that's a sink it's not the same anymore. if you could have 18 masks and just like you know go through two masks a day and let it out for nine days then that like you're that that's gonna be okay that's as for the latest uh available information that the covid 19 virus can survive for like up to nine days on this kind of service so yeah just have nine masks and the the next three ways are based on this uh, on a study there's a paper here it's a it's a very big paper it's like 18 pages it's really long it's very boring it's a scientific paper it's by the oxford academic um it was it came out on 22nd of august 2011 uh, Michael Lohr, Brian Kainbuck, Tian Brown, Joseph Ponder, Stephen. So it's um, okay. The Annals, the Annals of Occupational Hygiene, Volume Fifty Six, Issue One, January Two Thousand Twelve, Pages Ninety Two to to One Hundred and One. So yada yada yada. So okay, abstract. Filtering face piece respirators (FFRs) are recommended for use. As precautions against airborne pathogenic microorganisms, we know that against uh, microorganisms, however, during pandemics, demand for FFRs may exceed availability, as we already see what's going on with COVID-19. Reuse of FFRs following decontamination has been proposed, but few reported studies have addressed the visibility. Okay, so it makes sense. People in China have been even reusing it. Uh, and um, doctors have said, sure thing, you might be getting more sick because of it, because you're reusing masks with germs. Okay, so let's find out how you can decontaminate. Concern regarding biocidal efficacy respirator performance post-decontamination. Decontamination cost and user safety have impeded adoption of reuse measures. The study examined the effectiveness of three energetic decontamination methods, so three methods, okay. Ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, microwave generated steam and moist heat. So uh, to cut to the chase, basically they what they do is like they put uh, H5N1 viruses over masks and all the details are here. They tell you what exactly what kind of masks were used, exactly the methods of contamination, exactly how many minutes the masks had the virus on. And then they go ahead and they test um, these three methods and then they tell you how effective they were. So in a nutshell, all of these methods were effective to decontaminate N95 masks, meaning that you have f f three different ways that can work to decontaminate. So the ultraviolet germicidal irradiation that's basically what that is. It's using uh, UVC light to decontaminate those masks. And what you do, so if you want to do that, so basically what you do is you take your N95 mask 
and you stick it in a box with a very specific light bulb. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that light bulb is. It's, um, so what they used, uh, it's a dual bulb, 15 watt UVC, 254 nanometer wave lamp. Um, they used the uh, Upland, California, USA. And what they did is they put that in a LabGuard class two type A2 laminated flow cabinet, set to a height of 25 centimeters above the cabinet's working surface. And they exposed it for a total of 15 minutes. Wavelength dose of 18 kilojoules per minute. So basically I looked this up, you can get them on Amazon. Okay, and uh, read the reviews on Amazon because they're actually more expensive if you go to the direct site. Uh, I just ordered mine and I haven't, it hasn't arrived yet, which is why I'm going to show you a picture of it. Uh, and this is, uh, gosh, where did I buy it from? Um, it didn't come on the page. I'm not sure if it was Philips or something else, but basically you're looking at something that looks like this, okay? Or it could also be like the coiled ones that go around like that. Um, you have to look for the ones that have a base, well, you don't have to, but it's just more convenient if you get the base type E26, meaning it's gonna fit in your regular bulb, in regular lamps. And the only thing you are really looking for is the wavelength because that determines um, that, you know, it's going to work, basically. And the other thing you need to, so, so you're looking for wavelength of 254 nanometers and then you put that in a box and you put your mask in a box and you for 15 minutes and that is going to kill all the germs. Okay. Uh, the second method is a micro microwave generated steam. So basically what you do is you get a commercially, like your normal microwave, but preferably not the one that you, you know, heat your food in. And um, you put, so what you do is you put, you put your mask facing down like this. Okay, so I just bought these off Kijiji because everything else was sold out here in Canada. So you put the mask facing down like this because all the germs are going to be on the outside over here. You put it down facing like that and you do that over, okay, pay attention here, um, over a container filled with 50 milliliters of tap water. So what they did was they put... Samples were placed above a plastic box filled with 50 milliliters of room temperature tap water. The top of the box was perforated with 96 holes, 7 millimeter diameter, evenly distributed over the entire surface to allow MG as the uh, microwave generated steam to vent through the respirator. The virus contaminated respirator was placed with the convex, so that's the convex, so you place it down with the germs down, surface pointed towards the steam source and the FFR was then irradiated for two minutes at full power. Okay, so you have some kind of a plastic container, could be something like this. You put a 50 milliliters of water, which is very little bit, it's gonna be like down to here. And you put a top on top of that, you make holes in the top and you put your mask facing down. Or I don't know, maybe if your mask peels over the container, you can just stick it in like that. Although you're still gonna get germs on the outside. So I don't know, maybe just, Follow their instructions precisely for that one. And you you can you put that on for, for two minutes of full power. And the last source is a moist heat, and basically what you do is you have you use your oven for it. And this is this is the instruction, okay? A a six one sealable container, 19 by 19 by 17 centimeters, was filled with one liter of tap water placed in an oven. And then they tell you what oven they use. They use the Thermo Fisher Scientific Marinette Ohio USA. Okay. And heat it for 65 plus minus 5 degrees Celsius for 3 hours. This will allow the liquid to reach the desired temperature prior to any decontamination test. For testing, the container was 
removed from the oven and a single virus contaminated respirator was placed on the rack. For each decontamination procedure, the container was, was opened and the FFR placed on the rack with a convex surface pointed toward the water layer. Okay, so in both of these cases, you put the germs towards your water source. The container was then sealed and returned to the oven for the 20 minute treatment. Okay, so four methods. First method is you have, you have nine masks or 18 masks. If you, so if you change two masks a day, then you have 18 masks and you, you let the germs die off for nine days. Okay, that's your first method. Second method is you get a light bulb with 250, where are you? 254 millimeter, na I have to go, <laughs> 254 nanometer wavelength, which is your UVC lights. Do not look at the lights directly. Do not look at the light directly and do not put your skin to the light because you can get skin cancer and you can burn your eyes. The corner of your eyes can get burned and that you can be blind in pain for a day. That's what I read about it. So do not turn the light on if you look at it. There might be some, I don't know, eyeglasses or something that you can look at it. So basically build a box, stick, a light, stick the light inside the box, put your masks inside and any other material, gloves, clothes, gowns that you want to decontaminate in a box that's sealed so you're not looking at the light because don't burn your eyes, don't expose your skin because you're going to get skin cancer. Then uh, microwave generator seam. So put a container with a little bit of water in the microwave, full speed, put the mask facing with the, with, you know, the cup like that down. And the third method is moist heat. You put, uh, you put a pan with water in the oven, let it there for three hours at 65 degrees Celsius to make nice humid environment inside your oven. And then you uh, put that tray somewhere down also I don't know if you open it maybe all the moisture is gonna just go out and you put your mask there for 20 minutes okay so these are four ways that are scientifically proven to decontaminate coronaviruses okay so there you have it you can reuse your N95 masks and uh, you can spread the word okay and just so you know i bought this i bought my light bulb from i forget what website but i can look it up and i can post it in the description below <laughs> i and uh i just checked it because i wanted to print it to show you guys i just uh, looked up the light bulbs that i bought and they're gone so this stuff is selling and it's selling very fast uh, and the other ones that I didn't buy, their price went up from like $12 to $19 when I looked it up now. So if you want to set up, like if you're looking to set up a decontamination area for your family, or maybe you're a healthcare worker and you don't have the masks and now you have to like deal with all these people that are just getting more and more sick and they're just waiting to come to the hospital in the next one or two weeks, hospitals are going, back, are going to get completely swamped. And, um, yeah, you have to set up some kind of a decontamination area. I would suggest get those bulbs and set it up. Set up your little box or whatever you're going to use and uh, make it so that you don't, you know, so, so that you're going to be safe because you're probably going to be using that area very frequently. And, yeah, just get them ordered because uh, in three days, a lot of these bulbs are sold out. A lot of them are still on Amazon, but obviously check to see if they're shipping out of China because if they are, uh, you may not get it on time or they may not be shipping. Or if you're ordering from Amazon, read the descriptions because uh, for a lot of them, they're saying that they're, you know, the original, whatever that is, is like getting listed, but whatever they receive is like a generic type. And some people have tested it with the actual nanometer to test the wavelength. And they're saying that it's not the correct wavelength because they're just like sending you, uh, you know, like a generic product. So, okay, there you have it. So, um, I don't know, I guess subscribe and like and do all the rest of the stuff and uh, comment and all that. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.